it has been so long since I have brought out a video that I thought it would be a good idea for me to actually come on and show my face for once rather than just doing a, a standard voiceover. So here's my face before we go into the standard voiceover. Sorry I haven't been posting, you know, life has just been crazy. Um, and I haven't really, to be honest, been doing much street photography, but that is something that I am trying to change as of now, basically. Recently, I traded in my EF 16-35 f4 L series lens and the EF 50mm 1.8, the plastic fantastic, the nifty 50 that lots of people own. I went to London Camera Exchange in Norwich. They always treat me so well there. They always make sure that I'm leaving with a smile on my face and usually some new gear. It was great to actually go there and not actually spend money so I went in with two lenses and I left with two lenses. So I got the new RF 16 2.8 and the fairly new RF 50mm 1.8 to replace the EF version that I had. So this video that you're about to watch is with the RF 50mm 1.8. I've really been wanting to try like 50mm for street photography because I do feel like I love 85mm but sometimes it's just a little bit too punched in for me and I think 50mm could be that kind of sweet spot. Hope you enjoy this video, thank you for being so patient with the lack of videos and hello to all the new subscribers, uh, it's really good to see you, I've been watching the numbers go up and yeah it's really great. Not to fear, I do still have the RF24 to 105 f4, I know that lots of you on this channel are a big fan of this lens and that's how a lot of you found me, I do still have it and I will still use it for a lot of street photography but now that I do have the RF 16 and the RF 50 I've now completed that budget RF lineup I have the RF 16 mil the RF 50 mil the RF 35 mil and the RF 85 mil so I feel like I've got a really good lineup there now and I love how they all look on my shelf so if you want to see a POV coming up with any of those lenses, then let me know which one in the comments section down below and I'll make sure to go out and do that for you. I'm currently filming on the RF 16 2.8, if you couldn't tell. You might have noticed uh, some of the wobbles in the corners, partly due to the ibis on the camera and yeah, not the best, <laughs> but it is so compact for vlogging that I would take that any day over the 16 to 35 mil and I actually don't think that I vlogged with the R6 and that lens so I couldn't tell you how it compares with wobbles and all that but I am psyched to be on the channel again I'm so happy to be talking to you and I will see you soon with another video let's get on with the voiceover the reason why you're here the reason why you're sitting through this uh, you want to see either the lens the camera perform or maybe you do genuinely want to watch for my photography, in which case, thank you very much. Hope you like it. Bye. Oh my goodness, it has been a long time since I've recorded a voiceover. I forgot how fun it feels, like I feel like a, a radio presenter. Uh, I'm recording on the Shaw MV7, just in case you ever wondered why it sounds so crisp. I'm by the Forum in Norwich, um, it's this great I think it's owned by the BBC, or at least the BBC broadcast from it sometimes. And um, it was quite late in the day, the sun was just beginning to set, which was starting to cast these really interesting um, shadows and light because it was kind of beating down at an angle. And I kind of decided to stay here for a bit because I knew I could capture some interesting shadows from the people walking by. I had a really high shutter speed because I wanted to like freeze their motion. I wanted to keep like a very shallow depth of field, like I'm at 2.5. And obviously I always want to keep my ISO low. So it pretty much stays around the like 100 mark throughout this whole time. But yeah, I was pretty pleased with that shot of the two men walking because they kind of match their stride. They're holding like the same coffee cup. But um, it was fun. I'm always just warming up at the start. I take a photo of like the forum against the blue sky because the glass and everything creates like this nice effect. Took it to 2.5 at first, decided to change my aperture because I want more in focus as it's architecture. Change it to 6.3, it just makes like the whole image sharper, like I don't need a shallow depth of field when I'm shooting a building. This shot upcoming I see this man walking in this red jacket and lucky for me I also see a bus coming and it's also red. 
I'm constantly looking for like color matches when I'm out on the street. Um, I'm at 2.8, so I could have gone 1.8, got more of a shallow depth of field, but I would kind of want you to know that it's a bus. So I mean, I'm sure you could tell even if it was at 1.8, but sometimes I like to add a little bit more context to my photos. I don't always want to completely like blow out or blur out the background, but um, I think it's such an easy thing you can do with street photography, colour matching, but if you do it right, it can be quite effective. I'm not saying that that is like an amazing image. I'm still warming up at this point, but um, it's a general tip, like just always like follow your surroundings and look for colour matching because it happens so often. Like you wouldn't think so, but it does. There is a missed photo opportunity coming up and it bugged me at the time and it bugs me even more now. <laughs> so in the subway window to the left, you will see a woman standing in the window dressed the colour of subway. Dressed all in green. I went to take the photo, chickened out. How great would that have been? You know, sometimes I'm like so courageous and would just stand there and take the photo and like do it for the photo, get the photo, do it. And then sometimes I'm like, no. <laughs> so I kind of just didn't do it and got this random reflection shot instead. I was just playing with kind of like reflections I saw in the bus stop and thought it was interesting. Would have been more inter interesting if there was a subject, of course, but um, sometimes you're haunted by the shots you don't get. I saw a man sitting on a bench here and thought, it would look pretty cool like he was wearing a hat it would have been nicer if it was like a traditional cap in a way but i kind of just took a snap anyway i like the kind of color of the trees and the tomatoes in the left nothing special just warming up still i feel i feel like this whole outing was pretty much warming up i feel like my whole style of street photography is just warming up <laughs> um i quite like this shot here it was very quick on the go um if you really zoom into it it's not quite in focus that's a little secret don't tell anyone but it still looks good and on instagram you wouldn't even be able to tell I get the idea to use the building works like this red fencing it's kind of like you can use it as like a shallow depth of field or like a way to point to your subject it's quite easy to do this in towns especially because there's always building work going on it's just a way to use something to point to your subject i guess it's quite an obvious way to do something like, if that wasn't there, you'd know that the people are the subject, like, it's not necessary. But it adds a nice bit of colour. From using this lens on this outing, I'm, I'm really impressed with it, and I'm really happy that I decided to trade in the EF version to get the new version, because it's, it's so light, I don't have to adapt it, it's really quick to focus, and the quality is really good. I feel like I do notice a difference in quality, the... The quality of the bokeh even the focusing i'm really impressed with the rf version so if you are able to trade in your ef version or if you have the means to buy the rf i would definitely recommend it my friend david lopez he has a youtube channel i will link it down below he's actually recently bought this rf 50 mil as well he also owns the rf 50 mil 1.2 l version and actually recently compared the two so if you're interested in that comparison then go down into the description and go give it a watch i really loved like the pastel colors that marks and spencer's windows were giving me so i decided to just park up here and capture a few of the people walking by and obviously this person on the bike and then that kind of sparked an idea in me like, oh, I'm going to do a panning shot because imagine these colours completely blurred out in motion with a subject in front of it. And I have so much fun doing panning shots. It's obviously been a while since I've done them because I haven't been out in a while. So I would decide, let's go for it. Let's do a classic Darren Corbett photography panning shot. So I changed my focus method, wait for this cyclist to go by, follow him round and get this, which I'm really happy with. F13, 
1 over 1 15th of a second, ISO 100, always keeping the ISO low. And the way I determine my shutter speed is I match the speed of what I think my subject is going to be going at. So it's a busy street, it's right in the middle of a town, I think roughly they might be going about 15 miles per hour. So I do 1 over 15. And obviously with that 1 over 15 shutter speed you are letting a lot of light into the camera. So I compensate with that with the f13 uh, aperture. I decide to switch up location a bit, just not far, just like a second down the road just to get some more panning shots. The cars closest to me were too close with that 50mm, so I will wait for cars on the other side of the street to get this other panning shot. Really happy with this photo, I freeze it just enough, you can read all the numbers, it's crisp. Uh, I would have liked kind of less of the road in the photo, so I kind of should have centred it up. I did crop it a little bit, um, but yeah, pretty successful panning shot there. As you can see, I'm not switching up my settings. I kind of kept my settings from the first panning shot because it was successful enough, you know, don't fix what ain't broke. It was really good to get out again. And I feel like there's not many photos in this kind of session that were like really stand out ones to me. I do like this next one that I get of this person, spoiler alert, standing um, in front of this building here. I like that they're kind of like a lone subject in front of like this beige building and their red backpack really stands out. But yeah, I'm not like particularly blown away by any of these photos and I'm not saying that, you know, you need to be either. But to me, like, I was really happy with this outing because it had been a while and it was kind of like me dipping my toes back into the water of, of street photography again. I have been out a couple times with the Fujifilm X100V, really short trips um, just to kind of get back into using that camera again. I did film POVs for those outings. Again, I didn't get stuff I'm particularly, like, blown away by, the really short sessions. But like I said, I did film them, so if you would like me to maybe piece those two outings together and post it to my channel still, uh, let me know below because I think it's important to show like all sides of street photography. Like you're not always going to get these amazing photos. Sometimes you're going to go out and get okay photos. Sometimes you're going to get like really bad photos. I think it's more just about the experience and we should just celebrate just getting out there and, and doing what we love. Yeah, community. Not to, <laughs> not to get too deep, but um, yeah. Let me know if you want me to post those Fujifilm X100B videos. I am aware I haven't posted one in a while. Do still own and love that camera. There were so many dogs out today and it was just incredible because I love dogs so much and the more dog photos I have, like, the better, honestly. This dog was cool. I really like this photo here. I love this woman's bag and the fact that like, she was holding a cigarette. It was a really, like, quick flyby photo, um, but there's something about it that I really like. I love that it says, like, Snoopy because I feel like... Every time I do street photography, I'm just like snooping on people's lives. Um, so I feel quite snoopy, if that makes sense. This street wasn't as busy as usual. I kind of wanted to go out on this outing with the intention of coming to this area. But I think because there's so much building works going on, maybe there's not as many people coming to shop here. I don't know. Throughout Norwich there's these random bits of like greenery just to make it look pretty so I kind of wanted to use that as like half of the photo it literally is like half of the subject but it's like the subject itself. 
I just wanted to use that because it was like quite a nice contrast between like the urban and the jungle. It's literally like urban jungle. The slight color match here. I saw this guy wearing a yellow hat. Uh, he was walking outside of Snappy Snaps, which is obviously a very yellow store. I used the phone booth to the left and kind of the the bush to the right, kind of that again that contrast between like the the jungle and the urban. Look at these dogs. It's my dream to own this amount of dogs. Not right now, but maybe like in the future when I'm retired, when I can dedicate all my time to owning all these dogs. Another capture I like here. Um, I can't explain why. I guess I just like the shallow depth of field. I like their position. I like the, the headphones, the hat. Not like, it's not telling a story. It's not particularly amazing. And I can't tell you why I like it, but I do. And I feel like it's probably the, the thumbnail for this video. I'm really excited for the days to, to start getting longer again and the potential to start opening up for me to go visit some new places. I know I've been saying that for quite a long time, but you know, Omicron came back. Uh, the situation just kept worsening and I want to make sure everything is safe. Like, I don't want to be an idiot about it. I definitely can't wait to go and visit some more places this year. I have Mondays off of work, like I never work Mondays and I kind of want to dedicate um, that time to street photography where I can. Like not the whole day but I definitely want to spend a chunk of time giving that time to myself if that makes sense and I know that street photography is, is really good for me, it gets me out of the house, it literally clears my head, I'm not thinking about anything other than what's in front of me. So I really want to dedicate Mondays to that and, you know, that will reflect on my channel. That, that will turn into a great thing and you'll start to see more videos. I really would like to create like more of a community on here. Like I really want to hear from all of all of you like the people that watch the channel i want to have conversations with you i want to speak to you over on instagram in the comments on youtube so you know talk to me down below let me know where you're from what you're shooting on how you found me like tell me a bit about yourself like let's make some friends here So I was near Norwich Market, but I kind of wanted to stay away. I didn't really want to go in because so many of my videos are in Norwich Market, but I definitely wanted to use it, you know, as a background because it's so colorful and so pretty. And quite often people sit on these benches and they look at the market and they look at the castle, which you can see in the distance. It's a great place to sit and kind of see Norwich, if that makes sense. So I got this couple sitting uh, on the bench uh, and I think I shot them first initially at 1.8, which you'll see here. And I kind of wanted to get more of the scene and focus on more of the story. So I switched it to 6.3. And as you can see, everything's more sharp. Everything's more in focus. It's the story as a whole. Everything is in focus. The picture is Norwich. It's not a specific focus in the photo, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does. Um, anyway, I ran to this post here because I wanted to capture this man's red trousers. Um, they just were really striking to me, so I was like, I need to get these. This I like because so they're framed slightly to the right, and it's just really striking against kind of like the beigey brown colour. It seems to be everywhere in Norwich. It's very historic, so there's lots of like brown and brickwork in Norwich, and colours really stand out against it. This is Town Hall in Norwich. Again, 5.6 because of capturing architecture. Well, this voiceover has been a little bit rusty and choppy in places. Uh, I kind of forgot how I used to do these things. What did I ever talk about? But thank you so much for watching. It's great to be back. I will be back soon with another video. 
thank you for sticking around and thank you to all the new subscribers be sure to follow me on instagram and if you aren't subscribed go down below and do that if you want i'll see you soon with another video bye